Investors are making insane returns lending out their crypto. So I decided to invest $100,000 of my own money into this strategy so you can see if this is actually real. Is it possible to make more than $50 a day doing essentially nothing? Now let's see if I can break the world record for fastest account setup. So I need to create a Terra Station wallet and make sure to keep your seed phrase somewhere safe. Don't be like that guy on TikTok who had his seed phrase blasted all over the internet. Head over to KuCoin under Spot Trade. I'll have everything you need linked down in the description as well. And if you use those links, you'll save some money on trading fees. I'm swapping USDT for UST. Click buy. Now copy your wallet address from Terra Station and paste that into KuCoin. Choose the Luna network. Make sure you type in a memo. It doesn't matter what your memo is. They just require some kind of memo. Send a test transaction if you want to. I like to because I'm a little bit neurotic about these things. Now I need to send over my remaining funds. Oh, this withdrawal limit. Do they not realize I'm going for a world record speed run? You don't understand. I'm an athlete trying to beat a speed run world record here. I'm sorry, sir. I'm going to have to hang up. They'll call back. Sending over some more money. See you tomorrow to finish it off. 24 hours later. Finally, I can transfer the rest. All right, now that we have our fully funded wallet, we can head over to anchorprotocol.com. We need to first connect our wallet, click earn, click deposit, make sure our pop-up blocker is off, click deposit again, choose the amount and proceed, sign the transaction and we are good to go. We're on our way to earning that juicy passive income. Also, by the way, if you don't have money in a KuCoin account, what you can do is buy Bitcoin on Coinbase, send that to KuCoin, swap your Bitcoin for UST and then send that to Terra Station, connect it to Anchor Protocol and start earning that juicy passive income. I'll report back to show how much I actually earn here, but first, 20% APY sounds like a recipe for disaster. So we need to discuss if this is safe and if these rates are actually sustainable for the long term. Because Anchor Protocol is without a doubt the most important app in the Terra ecosystem with more than $5 billion in current deposits. If Anchor were to collapse and lose investor money, this would be the largest failure in crypto history. In order to understand whether this is actually sustainable though, we need to start with the basics. At $5 billion in deposits with a return of 20% annually, Anchor needs to pay out about $1 billion per year, assuming no growth. So this helps us tweak the question a little bit. Can they afford to pay out $1 billion a year? And if so, for how long can they keep this up? In order to determine this, we need to look at Anchor Protocol and how it earns money. This is done primarily through two ways. The first is borrow APR. This is people who are borrowing money from Anchor Protocol and paying Anchor an interest rate to do so. This is no different than how a bank makes money on a loan. We can see that as of right now, investors are borrowing $1.2 billion from Anchor Protocol and paying just shy of 12% interest to do so. This means Anchor is earning around $140 million per year in borrow interest. But there's a second component because in order to borrow money from the Anchor Protocol, investors must put up collateral. And this is because there's no credit scores in crypto. You must always deposit money in order to then get a loan. In this way, Anchor can be sure that you actually pay your loan back because if you don't, that collateral is theirs for keeps. Right now, investors have $2.8 billion in Luna and $365 million in Ethereum deposited as collateral on the platform. And what's great about this for Anchor is just like a bank, they can use that deposited Luna and Ethereum to earn them additional money on the money. They could lend it out themselves or take a safer route and stake the assets in order to be paid staking rewards. I found they're actually listed on a staking services website called Lido. So we're gonna assume that they're staking their collateral for that extra income. But how much does that actually make them? Well, currently Luna pays about 7.39% and Ethereum 4.87%. And now that we know what they're spending and how they make money, we can determine how sustainable that 20% interest really is. So let's build a chart. We know on current deposits, Anchor will need to pay out just shy of $1 billion annually. In terms of making money, Anchor is profiting about $140 million from interest paid to them as borrowing fees from investors. Then they're making $206 million annually from Luna staking and $17 million from Ethereum staking. Then we deduct 
deduct the expenses from the revenue and we're left with negative $620 million per year. Now, of course, this means Anchor clearly can't pay 20% APY forever. Major changes would be needed for them to just break even, much less turn a profit. So does this mean it's doomsday? Not quite. We need to realize that there's a lot of variables at play here. First, crypto has been hit hard recently. That means there's far more people lending out UST for passive income in order to play it safe and kind of ride out this storm. When cryptos are acting a little bit sketchy, we'll always see a shift to stablecoins. I mean, that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. The problem is, the more people lending UST on Anchor, the more Anchor has to spend, and we can see that their proportion of lenders versus borrowers isn't looking great. Spending is going up and revenues are going down. Now, if we see the market turn bullish again, things will look totally different. UST will be pulled out as investors buy altcoins, lowering Anchor's expense. Borrowing will become more popular, increasing the amount that Anchor earns both on interest and staking rewards. And the crypto collateral on loans will increase in value, meaning the staking rewards generated earn Anchor even more money on the exact same assets. Now, this might make you wonder, why is the world so cruel? Why does it have to be that at the times when we need stable coin lending the most, it's also the most unsustainable? And to that, I don't have an answer. You're gonna have to ask your spirit leader about that one. But what I do know is that at current rates, Anchor would have to lower their APR to 7.2% just to break even. Now, of course, 7.2% isn't bad by any means. However, that isn't very competitive when you can get rates of 12% plus on safer centralized exchanges. However, I hate to break it to you that those rates likely aren't sustainable either. Now this leads us to the next logical question. Just how long can they stay in the negative? Is it even worth depositing money if rates are going to drop next month? Well, let me introduce you to the yield reserve. This is where Anchor's money is actually coming from. The holy grail, the promised land of 20% APY. The thing is, their yield reserve is in place for markets like the one we're in. People are fearful and they're moving to stable coins and borrowing less. And fun fact, the yield reserve can afford this until they can't. If we look at the current yield reserve chart, we can see cash is depleting at an extreme pace. There's about $35 million left as of this recording. At a burn rate of $1.7 million a day, or about 340 German Innovation Awards daily, we have about 20 days before money completely runs out. This is not good but there are options. And by the time you're seeing this, there's a chance that at least one of the following solutions have already been made. First, more assets are being added to use as collateral on the platform. Very soon, we'll see Anchor at Solana and Atom. This matters because it will drive the amount of money Anchor can make through staked assets. Second, Do Kwon, the founder of Terra, has indicated that there may be a cash infusion into the yield reserve by as much as $300 million. This would give Anchor Protocol another six months of cash to burn. Update, they did it they added more funds. And then there's a few smaller options like banning DGEN box investing, which allows investors to earn even more than 20% APY on Anchor. Now the issue is none of these things makes Anchor self-sustainable. It's more like placing a band-aid on a $100 million wound. What happens if Anchor Protocol gets down to the wire, has no more assets to add, the $35 million in reserves completely runs dry, and they still need to spend $600 million a year year. Nothing. Nothing happens. Rates will just decrease to market rates, likely around that 7% that we discussed earlier. The concern isn't so much that they run out of money because as an investor, I won't lose money in this situation. My initial deposit won't disappear. I'll just earn less on that deposit. What's more of a D-Day situation is whether Anchor Protocol and UST are safe to use in the first place. First, we can see Anchor has been audited, which is a great sign. I would never deposit a big chunk of money into an unaudited protocol. There's just too many risks. However, this doesn't mean there aren't skeptics, which is good. I'm glad there are skeptics. And it's also important to note that ImmuneFi is offering $50,000 to developers who may find bugs on Anchor. And then the founder of Terra took this to the next level, tweeting that he would personally pay an additional $1 million if a critical bug is found. So it appears that Anchor is likely safe to use software-wise but we also need to consider the potential risks with the UST stablecoin. See, UST is an algorithmic stablecoin. This is 
just a fancy way of saying that the price is stabilized through code in a smart contract instead of US dollars in a bank account. This sounds crazy, but imagine Jerome Powell at the Fed, except if he were a super intelligent AI robot. Your move, creep. But even robots get it wrong sometimes, because while the invention of algorithmic stablecoins are fascinating, many question their stability long term for good reason. In May of 2021, during a brief market crash, UST dropped below the $1 peg all the way down to 84 cents. Now, luckily, UST's mechanics work properly and the price recovered, but this didn't mean that there was zero damage done. I remember reading a Twitter thread about a guy who panic sold his UST when it dipped, losing $1,400. And there were surely forced liquidations at this time for people who had high leverage loans backed by UST. And unfortunately, this isn't worst case scenario. A while back, Mark Cuban, of all people, was doing some yield farming when he got a tad greedy and he ended up investing in this pool containing the stable coin DAI and another token called Titan for the ripe APY of 206%. And all was well at first. In fact, he even made a blog post titled The Brilliance of Yield Farming, where he explains the exciting returns that he was getting. This was until the price of the Titan token started to slip. Investors got nervous and a quick sell-off occurred, tanking that crypto's price. Now, this in itself isn't very uncommon in crypto, a small token collapsing in price. What was unique was Titan was the underlying asset for a stablecoin called iron. When Titan collapsed, so did the stablecoin attached to it. This created a kind of crypto bank run. Titan's token price ended up going from around $60 to less than one penny, and Mark Cuban lost his entire investment. So we know it's possible for an algorithmic stablecoin to fall off its peg, but could this actually happen to UST? Well, we can't say it's impossible. It's very unlikely at this point because multiple billions of dollars would need to flow out of UST instantly for issues of this magnitude. And in fact, if the worst case were to happen and UST collapsed, a recent update in the Terra ecosystem includes an insurance policy that actually protects users against this exact scenario. So you can take all of this in consideration when deciding if UST lending is for you. Now, the real question is, how is my investment doing? One eternity later. It has been a month of lending UST on the Anchor protocol, and did it live up to its promise of nearly 20% APY? It did. Taking a look, we can see I've earned just over $1,600 doing absolutely nothing but basically just sipping my coffee and watching my account balance grow like I was some kind of evil genius watching his plan unfold, except all I really did was just click the deposit button. So Anchor is dealing with some growing pains. Current market conditions are causing them to burn money like never before, $1.7 million a day to be exact. However, they do have some Band-Aid solutions that will help temporarily as they become more self-sustainable. If they can't reach sustainability, the result will be lower interest rates, maybe around 10% or slightly less. But until then, based on my tests, the nearly 20% APY is very real for those willing to take the steps to actually deposit deposit the money. This, of course, isn't risk-free, and you should always do your own research as well. From here, I would highly recommend joining my Patreon community. If you were there a month ago, you would have already known about my UST lending strategy, and you would already be up potentially hundreds of dollars in interest. There, you'll also find free daily coaching, a private community, and a whole lot more. So grab your spot as soon as possible, and check out why we have more than 12,000 satisfied members. From here, I would recommend checking out this video on screen covering some degenerate investments that I recently made. And I would just like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.